Welcome to Legacy Coach K, where we'll explore the career of Mike Krzyzewski through the eyes of his former players. And today it's the 1990s. And with us to discuss Coach's second decade at Duke is, drum roll please, Grant Hill, a member of the 94 Duke class who was a standout on those back-to-back 1991-92 national championship teams, who also played for a third national championship his senior year, and then follow that up with an amazing 19-year career in the NBA that included seven all-star appearances. And also with us today is Steve Wojciechowski, who played 128 games for Duke the four years after Grant graduated, became an assistant coach in 99, and worked side-by-side -side with coach for 14 years before taking the head job at Marquette in 2014. Thank you both for being here. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here, Kenny. Grant, walk us through how Coach motivated your team's freshman year. You guys win, then repeat the next year, have a, a not a down year, but you can't go to the finals every year. And then you get back to the finals in 94. Walk us through his motivation, because that was part of his legacy to motivate other kids to come to do. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think back during my four years, every year, uh, Coach had a bit of a different approach to how he how he led us and 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 you know that first year uh, we lost three seniors three starters from the year before a team that had been to the finals and, and lost to UNLV uh, we had Christian and Bobby returning as the only starters Christian was going into his junior year Bobby his sophomore year uh, we had a bunch of guys like Thomas Hill Brian Davis who had been role players uh, Billy McCaffrey as well uh, and then we had a large freshman class of, of five, myself included. So, you know, I, I think that year he really drove us hard and, and almost willed us, you know, in a lot of ways. And he had a vision that we could be really good. He had a vision that we could win a championship. But um, it took a lot of work and a lot of effort, I, I believe, on his part uh, to get us to a point where uh, we, were, we were ready, we were prepared, we believed. And, and that was, you know, really right up until the tournament, right going into the Final Four. Um, he, he just, I feel like he put so much into getting us to the mountaintop. Uh, then that following year, you know, we had been to the mountaintop and we had returned a number of guys from that championship team. And, uh, and so he took a different approach and he, he wasn't, uh, he didn't drive us as hard. And we were motivated, we were confident, maybe overconfident uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, so he really managed us and understood, I think, the pressures, the expectations. Uh, so it was a different approach in terms of his leadership uh, in guiding us throughout the regular season uh, and, and really helping us, uh, you know, um, as we were limping <laughs> to the finish line uh, throughout that, 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 that season. Um, and so, you know, every year, those four years that I was there, the goal was to win a championship. And every team as players graduated on and moved on and, and new players came in, you know, each team had its own, uh, its own personality and, and its own strengths and weaknesses. And I think Coach, you know, one of his many strengths was his ability to sort of adapt and adjust. Uh, but not compromise his, his sort of core values and, and what he believes in. Uh, and so, you know, my senior year was a little bit of a different approach. We weren't maybe as deep as we had been in years past. Uh, we had, you know, Chris Collins and, and Jeff Capel uh, as, as sort of young, maybe inexperienced in the backcourt. Uh, we had an experienced front line with Cherokee and Tony Lang and myself. Uh, and so, you know, sort of bringing us along in that way and and uh, and still coaching us hard, uh, still instilling the values that, that are Duke basketball. Um, but, you know, once again, you know, just, you know, bringing us differently, understanding the personalities, the psyche of that, fr of that team. Uh, and that's what I, you know, I've admired about him and, and playing for him was that um, it wasn't sort of this cookie cutter approach to leadership and to coaching and to teaching. Um, but really taking the time to invest in players, understand who they are, understand their personalities, and then try to figure out the best way to connect with them 
and get the most out of them. And, uh, you know, during those four years, I was fortunate we, we were able to do some amazing things as a result of his incredible leadership. My formative years in basketball were formed watching his teams, the Grant Hill teams, the Bobby Hurley teams, Christian Leitner, Tony Lang, Thomas Hill. And when I was 12, 13 years old, when I watched that team play, I identified with everything I thought they represented. Competitors, teamwork, guys that had it going for them on the court, off the court. When Coach K and Duke started recruiting me, it was, it was an honor, it was a thrill, and to be honest with you, I was in a little bit of disbelief. Uh, but I'm so thankful it happened. Um, obviously for me, with a name like Wojciechowski, when a guy named Krzyzewski is recruiting you, uh, coming from a proud Polish family, there's a little bit of internal pressure too. Uh, so if you're gonna decide between Smith and Krzyzewski and your last name is Wojciechowski, you know at the family uh, get-togethers wh where everybody was leaning. We'll be back with more of Grant and Wojo right after this. We had a few losses in my four years there, and, and to me, um, you know, his excitement, his his preparation, his his want to for that follow-up game was, was always so intense and something that was really inspiring. So, um, you know, it's just always reminded me in life, you know, you get knocked down, you, you have failures, and, uh, you know, he's... He's the model of how to respond. Welcome back to Legacy Coach K, the 90s. Well, Joe, when you came to Duke in 94 that fall, things were a little different. You know, that freshman year was a little different than you had anticipated with Coach K's medical leave, which resulted in the, non, the only non-NCAA tournament season between 83 and 2021. How did his comeback in the whole next three years, how did he lead and motivate your teams uh, to where at the end of your senior season, you finished the season as the number one team in the country going into the tournament? Yeah, you know, my experience was different than Grant's. You know, Grant w was on teams that, as he said, were were at the mountaintop or darn close. And, you know, really, I followed one of the golden ages of Duke basketball. And uh, during my freshman year, as you mentioned, you know, Coach got ill. And when he left, there was a huge vacuum of leadership and we were all responsible everybody who was who was there was responsible you know for that but there was a, there was a huge vacuum and, and none of us handled it as well as we wanted to or i think we we could have uh, but we didn't know because our leader was gone and it just shows the impact his leadership had uh on a day-to-day -day basis so my career really was not at the mountaintop. You know, we were in the valley. You know, my freshman year was the valley. And that was a very unfamiliar place for Duke basketball to be. And going through it, I wouldn't want, have wished it on anyone, but with the hindsight of age and all the lessons I learned from it, I'm thankful for it because I got to be a part of Duke returning to the mountaintop. And those times, while difficult, I think build a new foundation that the Duke program could continue in a new era to, to be at the best, to be the program everybody looked to and wanted to model. Um, you know, Grant was on some of the most talented teams that Duke ever had. I mean, you're talking about Christian Bobby, two of the greatest college players to ever live. Grant, one of the best basketball players to ever walk the planet. Our teams, and especially not necessarily my freshman year, but my sophomore year, and I'd say this, and I think my teammates, we were probably the least talented team that coach has ever coached at Duke. But that team led by Chris Collins, and a group of fighters, we were able to overcome adversity. 0-4 start in the ACC play. We were 4-8 and eight and we had our backs against the wall and had to win four to go to 500 in the ACC to put ourselves in a position to make the NCAA tournament or else it would have happened twice. 
Um, and we did. And that group was as close a group, uh, was as tough a group, as resilient a group as I've ever been a part of. And what we may have lacked in, in talent and experience, I mean, goodness gracious, we had a, we had a game-winning out-of-bounds underplay. And we had Stan Brunson who is a soccer player and maybe the worst free throw shooter in the history of, of Duke basketball, inbounding the ball. Runs of inbounds, Wojo, tough matchup here. Rice to win, he got it, he's good! Holy cow, what a shot at the buzzer! And we won the game on a last second shot by Ricky Price. And that team showed great courage and, and really, Every year after that, during my career, we got better. And we, we, we unfortunately, were never able to win a national championship uh, like Grant had the chance to experience. But that group, uh, Trajan, uh, Chris Collins, Jeff Capel, uh, Chris Carowell, Nate James, that group laid the foundation, which the groups that followed us built off of. And we're able to get back to the mountaintop and we're able to return Duke to being the standard by which every other program measured themselves against. My years might have been, you know, I don't want to say the most celebrated, but I think certainly uh, an exciting time. But, but his years, that those that four year stretch that I believe was the most important time in Duke basketball, and as Wojo said, gave a foundation for sustained success and. You know, people, I don't think people truly understand how difficult and challenging those years were. And I think it just, it gave a, not to say it wasn't there before, but it just gave a, a grit, a toughness, um, a, a character that, that was so needed and has gone on and just surpassed in a lot of ways uh, what was happening or what, what, what success was there before. Uh, I think we look at Coach now, and obviously he's an icon and deservedly so. Um, but that four-year stretch, like that was, that was not easy. And I don't think people appreciate or value uh, just how difficult, how hard Woe and Jeff and Chris and all those guys, you know, what they put in, what they endured, and what they ultimately were able to accomplish. And uh, you know, from that moment on, it's been. I mean, we, we almost get spoiled by the continued year in and year out success of the program. But, but those guys, man, I, I really appreciate and, uh, and value what, you know, what, what contributions they made because that wasn't an easy time at all. You know, Kenny, momentum is fragile. And I think, you know, you look from 86 to 94 and you look at the, the list of accomplishments of the program and Coach K in particular. And what I observed during my time is that uh, Duke was run like the best mom and pop shop in history. And what I mean by that is every plug went into Coach K's outlet. And he's, even though he's done some superhuman things, he's human. And I think it was exhausted. I think at the end of the day, I think he was exhausted in addition to being injured. And during my time, um, as the program transformed, I saw it go from being a program where the, the, the outlet and every plug didn't always have to be plugged into Coach K's outlet. And it, was, it became run more like a Fortune 500 company that could sustain excellence, as Grant said, for decades upon decades. And now the second one, he'll miss it. Off to the side, Carter couldn't do it, loose, scrambling. And to be on the front lines of that, even though some of the losses and experiences were difficult, see to see what it led to was incredible. And you know, I'm really proud to be a part of that along with my teammates, because um, it was an incredibly important time in the Duke program. That's great, guys. We'll be back with more of Legacy Coach K right after this. Uh, Coach, uh, I just want to say thank you for 
Um, everything that uh, you've done for me and my family uh, you mean uh, the most to us. Uh, I think you know how much you mean to me as well. Um, thank you for everything you've done for the game of basketball, everything you've done for um, all the fans out there, um, all the players that have come through Duke. Um, thank you for creating a brotherhood and allowing that to be a thing. Um, uh, I just want to say thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart. Welcome back to Legacy Coach K, the 90s. Well, Joe, 14 years by his side. What did you take from playing, coaching with Coach K into your head coaching experience? Well, there are so many uh, things that I that I took, not only in coaching, but, you know, my, my life. I mean, the, I am so appreciative of all the memories and experiences that I had as a Duke basketball player. But the, the, the things that has impacted me the most are the lessons that I learned uh, while playing for coach and observing him, uh, trying to uh, do the things that he asked me to do, whether it's the things he asked me to do as a leader, as a player, um, or somebody that was trying to help him as a coach. You know, there, there was not a day that went by uh, when I was coaching um, that I didn't ask myself, or ask him, you know, what would coach do in this situation? And those lessons allowed me to impact the lives of the guys that I coached. Um, you know, think about this in terms of Coach K. When you think about your life, and then for me, my relationship with Coach has spanned now three decades, which is hard for me to believe. Um, but anytime I've had something important going on in my life, either uh, the peaks or some of the challenges that I've faced, he's one of the first people I call. And when you think about your own life, when you're going through the highs and lows that come with life, you think about the people that you reach out to and you seek counsel from, that you want their perspective or opinion. You know, for me, it's, it's less than a handful. But nearly every time that I went was going through something or wanted to share a victory, I'd call coach. And that's three decades. And I, I'm sure the guys that have played for him that came before me and the guys that played for him that have come after me, they would say similar things as they're trying to navigate their, their own life and are on their own individual journey. Uh, one of the people that they reach out to, probably one of the few, is Coach K. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that speaks volumes of his leadership and the way he approached coaching uh, from a relationship standpoint. In your opinion, Grant, what is Coach's legacy going to be uh, from, from a player standpoint? What do you think his legacy is? Well, first of all, Kenny, I didn't realize you were a one and done, uh, only playing for yeah, well, one Gene, year. Yeah, right. so, Gene and I were the technically speaking first one and done. That's right. The first one and done. So uh, no, that's uh, that's fantastic. You know, I mean, his his legacy is a lot of things. Um, I, I just think it's it's. I mean, obviously, we 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 see we we know we're we're, we're aware of the accomplishments, the success. Uh, just an incredible resume. Um, but I think, you know, for me, um, it, it goes back to, to what, you know, what I was drawn to in the first place. And it's the relationship and his ability, you know, to connect with people, being honest, being authentic, being real. Um, just an, an endearing quality. I, it's, it's hard to put into words, but I, I think it's the relationship. I mean, um, the fact that, I played for him for four years, um, but it really truly has been a relationship for a lifetime. And, um, you know, how lucky are we and how lucky have we been that our coach, you know, has been there for, for 25 plus years since I played for him. And he's still my coach. He's still, as Will talked earlier, when, when things, when it was problem solving, maybe career advice, um, 
you know, he's someone you can count on. And I think we all share that. Um, so to me, you know, his legacy is just the incredible relationship and connection uh, that we have. And uh, understanding that every relationship and connection is different, but I think it's important and valued um, by each former player and, uh, and I think by coach. And, and uh, so to me, you know, that's what makes him great in a lot of ways, his, his, his relationships, his understanding of his players, uh, his understanding of his staff. And, um, you know, that's the thing that I, I value and appreciate the most. Um, and, you know, I think would, would you know, would, would say is, is, is a large part of, of his legacy in my eyes as a former player. Uh, well, Joe, how many times when we look at the brotherhood, you look at K Academy and how he would bring us all back for those summer times for the last 17, 18 years. What is your what is your opinion about his legacy from the player standpoint? Look, Coach K's impact is incredible. You know, I, I think his legacy is going to be the millions of people that he touched. Um He's obviously a one-of-a-kind human being. And the game of basketball and his time at Duke has been the vehicle that he's used uh, to show his gifts and then to use his gifts to make the world around him better. I mean, he's literally impacted positively the lives of millions and millions of people. And Grant and I are the lucky ones because we got to be in the vehicle with him for a short period of time while he was doing that and be a part of it. Um, and so I think that's going to be his legacy. You know, the, 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 the win records, the championships, all those things are incredible. But I think they pale in comparison uh, to, to the impact that he's had in the world around him, whether it's at Duke or Durham or nationally, cancer research or just the, the families of the people that he's coached. Uh, it's it's mind boggling, to be honest. That's a wrap for the 90s. Thank you guys for doing this. And thank you for joining us on Legacy Coach K. Legacy Coach K.